Take me out to California. Hi everyone. So it is two years on Tuesday since my husband Ross died. And I've said this before, but it blows my mind that it's been two years that he hasn't been here, that we that I haven't felt his energy, his presence his humour, his love, it's, it's just weird, it's, I, it's full isn't it, like it's, it's just a really strange thing, a strange life thing that you, that somebody can be so significant in your life for, you know, I, the reality is I had Ross for 10 years, just under 10 years and it felt like a lifetime because we were together all the time, like pretty much every day. Um, but somebody can be so significant in your life, like change, Ross changed my life and, and no doubt I did his as well. You know, we, we had children together, we, you know, I moved, uh, every, you know, everything on all different levels. That somebody can have that significance and then suddenly they're just gone, not there. It's a, it's a weird thing and I'm sure there's, there's so many of you out there that have gone through this, whether it's the loss of a parent or a sibling or a partner or, you know, a friend. And it's just, it's just really eye-opening. And I think the last year, and I said this on his birthday and stuff like that, but the last year has been tricky in new ways. But then, you know, on the other side of that, for those that are right at the beginning of their grieving stage. On the other side, there is positives. You know, the, the time is a healer. Uh, it sounds like a cliche, but I think it's true that it's not that it heals that that grief. It doesn't take it away, but you build, you build your life around the grief. And if you can make that big enough, then the pain of that loss isn't doesn't feel quite as consuming and I think my my thought process since the beginning has always just been you know you don't need to pick at a scab like I could sit here and I could think why has this happened why why did he have to die why did he have brain cancer why me why has this happened to my daughters what what have we ever done to deserve that I could go through all of it and I would cause myself so much pain and anguish and sadness because there is nothing I can do about it. Not a thing. I can't bring him back to life. I can't stop what's happened. And it's it's almost like as if you're try if you try to fight against what's what's happened, then you cause yourself pain. I think practicing acceptance and letting go of something that you just have no control over. That is what's got me through, I think. Because I think if I'd sat there, you know, during his death, you know, I, those of you that don't know this, he was in a hospice um, at the end of his life and, and I was there every day for a month in the hospice and watched, watched his body break down, watched him die. And at every stage of that, it was painful and I practiced detachment from the the situation because I needed to, it was healthy to. I didn't need to feel every bit of that. And I also practiced accepting that this was happening. And I meditated and I breathed through it. And I just learned to accept that that was what was happening because I can't control it. And I think in doing that, and I've continued to do that, in the hardest points, I've had to breathe through it. And I know that there, and there still is, obviously, there's moments where it will catch my breath. You know, it will, there'll be a, a song that comes on, you know, music and smells and things are so powerful. And it will be a, wow, like, he's not coming back and it will get me and or it will be something that the girls will say and you know we've had a we've had a few conversations recently about them wanting to have told him stuff and I think that's hard as a parent you know 
for me as a mum, it's hard for them, you know, to tell me, you know, I really wish daddy could have saw that. And, and was and was dad was dad alive then when that happened? And I have to say, no, he wasn't, darling, actually. He didn't, he wasn't, he'd have been so proud of you though. And, and then being disappointed that he wasn't there for that. And that's hard, you know, that's hard as a parent because you feel disappointed for them that he isn't there and I feel you know I feel disappointed for him as well like sounds crazy to say that because he's not alive and I don't personally believe he is a somewhere you know I don't believe in heaven or any version of that um I know his energy is here on here because energy is is infinite and I guess there's a comfort in that and he would have liked that thought process because he was a massive atheist and you know very much into science and so he would have liked the thought of his continuation being being part of the world in some form of energy um but i guess you know there's no point saying that to somebody who's in the in the grips of loss because they want their person in the form they knew them in their human form not in a bunch of energy f floating about somewhere um, whatever science, whatever science that is that I just said, um, you know, we want our people here and, and so that's not really a, a good thing to say to somebody in their early stages of grief but I think it's comforting for me to just think Ross came here and he was happy with what he did and he was, and he was, he was happy that he showed up in the way that he wanted to show up which pissed people off a lot of the time because he was full out completely unapologetically himself and anybody that knew Ross would would completely concur with that um and there's just something properly beautiful about that now when someone dies it doesn't make them a saint Ross was a shit at times in the nicest way but he would give you the the most honesty like in one breath he might say it's somebody something that's completely insulting to them ross was on the autistic spectrum he had asperger's um which is just um, autism now but he he was autistic so he would say the most brutal comment to somebody but in the same breath he would give somebody the best compliment in fact yesterday i was with one of my friends and she said one of the first things he said to her was you've got nice arms <laughs> like it's so such a um an unusual uh, compliment but that was that was Ross and that's what you know he just he just lived in his own way and I, there's just something beautiful about that however that may you know not always be practical for most people I think there's something special about being able to come onto this you know be in this world and, and live how you want to live and you know he said to me from the beginning of knowing that he was at, you know dying and that he wasn't going to be able to get over the brain cancer. He just said, you know what, I've done everything that I wanted to do. And, you know, obviously he wanted to be here for the girls, for me, for, you know, he wanted, he wanted to be alive. Like he didn't, he didn't not try and fight the cancer. He did. He did all the stuff and, you know, and the cannabis for all those people that go bang on about cannabis all the time. He did that. He still died. It's not for everybody. Um, he did all the stuff and it just, you know, it, it just wasn't his path for a reason and so yeah I mean I don't know what this video is about but I just wanted to mark it you know I did Lorraine Kelly um the other day in the UK and I talked a bit about it and it's just hard to I guess it's hard to talk about because people want to see the grief on me in a form that they understand and I don't know what that is like I still get upset by certain things you know and I get upset that he's not here that he's missed out on things but on the other side like I appreciate that life moves forward and that we have to move forward as people and we can't say he's stuck Ross is always going to be part of our lives he is part of the the girls makeup their DNA I see his face in them like I see how they respond is part of him like he is always part going to be part of our lives but also, you know, since Ross died, there's two years now, we've, you know, we've done some great stuff. We have a great life. We are not, absolutely not for one second, living a sad, depressing, 
you know, given up kind of life. We're not. I'm not. The girls aren't. We, we are happy more than we are sad. The sad moments are moments of feeling disappointed that Ross didn't get to be here for this. Um, you're always the recognition of things that, you know, Ross would have done or, you know, there's just moments like we, his brother and his, um, my sister-in-law, they had a joint birthday party recently and his brother wore Ross's trousers and he found a hundred quid in the pocket must have been from a wedding or something and so he, he did a round of drinks for everybody and you know there was something there was something emotional about that like that he was able to do that and that he would have done that and that it was just kind of nice for people but then that's also emotionally sad isn't it as well um but I yeah I just wanted to mark this you know like two years it's not that I am um, marking his death isn't something like it's not like a it's not the same as marking a birthday or a father's day or i don't know like it's not a day i want to remember but then equally right now in a way is harder ross dying in in a weird way by the end was a relief not that you know not that we wanted that i wanted him to die because that's obviously not true but seeing the lead up to it was you know watching his body decline and and die and actively die and watching him basically starve was not something that anybody wants to do is it and so actually thinking about where i was this time and facebook shares a lot of stuff with me that is harder because i know emotionally the the places i was having to dig from to get me through that stage and you know seeing pictures of me come up you know even just seeing um just seeing the pain I can see the pain and I can see you know things like the weight loss on me like it was it was the pain so I guess it's you know it, it's marking his death is not like a it's not no kind of celebration is it it's just not in that wow two years have gone past without him in our lives and I feel sad about that I do um but our lives are really good and I have some beautiful people in my life that I love with all my heart and I can't you know I, I, I can't ask for more than that because we can't change what's happened so we have to live in the right now and and actually the right now is really good and that can sit right alongside each other my life is brilliant I have people that I love in my life and I still miss Ross. I think that sums it up really. But two years, wow. That's where we're at. Some of you followed me from that moment or from that time. So thanks for sticking with me. And for you guys who are new, welcome to the channel. This is not always what I'm talking about, but it feels like it a little bit at the minute. Um, but yeah, thanks for your support guys. Comments below and um, yeah, subscribe if you enjoyed my ramblings and maybe needed to hear this i don't know peace take me out to